What is up everybody? This is Night Shift and I'm back for episode 13, week 12 of my UMass Dynasty. And uh, I gotta apologize for being gone for so long. I was having a little bit of trouble with my internet and uh, I couldn't get anything uploaded. But now I am back and uh, stuff's gonna be coming out regularly again. Alright, uh, back to the recruiting. Got some very important stuff to go over with you guys this week. It's a very important week for the development of the dynasty. And it uh, starts out basically just like everything else. And I want to show you guys that I signed our quarterback, John Williams, the 75 overall um, quarterback that is a Juco junior. So uh, that's going to definitely help us out next year since I'm losing my quarterback. And there's some other important stuff that uh, I need to show you guys later. Uh, we're going to start out, as always, by doing all of the scouting. And you're going to notice that there's not much scouting left to do for these guys. So basically, I'm going to do everybody here except for the punter. We're just going to finish up everybody's scouting. And you don't actually need to scout the punter. He's just like a, uh, a fill-in. So not, no real point to doing that. You also notice there's a bunch of soft commits to everything. Everybody at this point is pretty much soft committed, with the exception of maybe five guys. Looks like oh, six, seven. Okay, eight guys. We got eight guys that are not soft committed, and three of those are uh, I'm not first on their list. So we're still trying to get three guys, including. The uh, linebacker here at the bottom, who we just lost the top spot on. So we're going to have to take a look at giving him some extra time this week. Alright, so now I'm going to show you, as always, the guys I'm trying to get still. Um, we're pretty far behind Oregon right here. However, this is a visit week. So we have one last chance to get this guy this week. Hopefully it works out and we don't have to go try to get another kicker. Because this guy actually seems pretty good. He's a 79 overall uh, freshman. So it would be really nice to get him. But if we don't, we just go get another kicker. Get uh, the best stuff that we can get right here. Yeah, this should be a decent visit. Alright. And now, who else we got? We got uh, Andre Burke, the wide receiver that I want to turn into a running back. He, uh... He's also pretty far behind Louisville here, but also, again, it is a visit week for him as well. So we'll see what happens with him after this week. We're going to pretty much know the futures of these two guys after this week is over. And then, after I do a bunch of time on everybody else... Oh, wait, first got to do the, uh, the activities for the visit. And then after everybody else, we come down to Ryan Harris here at the bottom... We just lost the top spot on him, but see no reason why we can't overtake Wyoming back again. He uh, He's also on a visit week, so should not be a problem. So just give him a half an hour. Alright, uh, normally we'd be done here, but we are now ranked 15th, and that means it's time to go and start recruiting some guys who haven't been recruited yet. So now that we have some leverage being up in the top 25, nicely ranked at 15, um, we're going to check out a couple of guys that have 10 schools remaining or 8 schools remaining. So you're going to see me go through a few guys with uh, 10 schools remain remaining first. And we can go for some decent guys here. Um, you're always going to see me go for the quarterback because he's a little bit better than the John Williams that we have so far and you're always going to definitely see me go for offensive linemen that is a huge part of recruiting you got to make sure that you get some some good offensive linemen all right so we got three Let's get one more guy here with that has 10 people left get an offensive lineman all right now we're going to switch it to eight schools we got 395 matches for that and a bunch of four star guys that we're going to have to choose from this guy's the number three quarterback, but uh, Virginia Tech looks like they got a lock on that so far. So, you know what? We might take a flyer on him later, but for right now, 
Uh, not yet. Northwestern's offered that guy a scholarship, but you never know. They're toward the bottom of his list. And the fact that these guys are all in the top eight means it'll be easy to get on their boards as soon as we add them in. And uh, let's go for one more quarterback here. This is a four-star guy as well. And uh, he's from Texas. I think I still have a recruiting advantage in Texas. And then we'll go for this linebacker as well. All right, these are all eight of the guys that I added. And uh, the one guy has the scholarship offer, everybody else. Just gonna split up the time and uh, try to get all these guys focus more on the four star guys. But uh, these are the guys that I've signed so far, as you can see. You have the two corners and the quarterback, which was the big key, and a bunch of offense linemen. So now you can see we're 41st in uh, in the ranking right now for the recruiting class. All right, guys, it's time for the game. Against Bowling Green, this is going to be our last home game of the year, so we got to take it to them and try to finish this out, uh, this out strong. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, um, this was a very easy game. We we rolled pretty much all the way through this one. This is not going to be that long of a video, as you see right there. I'm just going to start out with running it like we always do, but uh, I'm going to show you guys what's been happening and uh, what we have left. And this is the last tough spot in the schedule as uh, Ball State is 1-9. and nine. They should be a breeze in Week 13. But uh, Bowling Green is 6-3, and three, and they should have put up a, probably a little bit more of a fight than they did. But I'm just going to run it, run it, and run it some more, just like we always do. Got the stretch play going, and we got the uh, off-tackle run going. And when that's working, there ain't nothing they can do to stop me. All right, now here... Pick it up on a third down, and you're going to see Watts is wide open right there, and I overshot him, so we're going to go for it here on fourth down, as I always do in that spot. Blanche Flower comes up big, and when Blanche Flower starts coming up big, I like to go to him a lot. And with nobody going out there to cover, right there, it's a zone. I float it right in there. Blanche Flower makes a great catch, and we're going to run it right in with Broadnax for the touchdown. 7 nothing lead. When we get the lead, usually things go our way. Uh, first drive, 3.5 minutes, 12 plays. It's the best first drive you can get. Alright, just so you guys can see, we moved up to 15 in coaches poll. And actually, Toledo stayed at 17. Or, they dropped back to 17 on the coaches poll. Which is really good news for us still, because they go on our strength of schedule. And you see the media poll... We're going to be in at 14, and Toledo's still at 17 after losing to us, which is good news for us. All right, so now we're going to get back to the game in a second. <sighs> oh, right, I forgot. i got to check out the BCS. The BCS, the computers aren't loving me that much so far, but we'll see what we can do with a championship game to, uh, to fix that. On the next drive, I'm going to... Pin them back with a sack, create a third and 18, and uh, they're going to go big The Tharps there, and he's going to come up with the big interception, and that's going to be how this game pretty much goes for them. Uh, as you can see, we're still running it very effectively with Broadnax, and he's got nine rushes for 60 yards at that point, and you know, when you're running it good, that starts creating lanes to throw it. I'm getting everybody involved a little bit today. See me get McKinney involved right there. And then here again on the play action, we got Blanche Flower again wide open. And there's another touchdown for him. Alright, so now I was up 14 nothing. and I was cruising along. And then this particular drive, they started moving the ball on me a little bit. And I come up short right there on that tackle attempt. On the second and 14, break a tackle, get a few extra yards, and that would actually set them up for this field goal, and barely goes through. So, I'm gonna take a 14 to three lead into halftime. Now, uh, now I wanted to show you guys. See me and Bowling Green are on the same side. 
is a huge game for the you got to win this game so I can get to the conference championship game against Toledo so can't let up got to finish this one out strong right and uh, take down this conference it's the only way to, to move on up so they're going forward deep again and this time it's Terrell with the interception he's come up with some big ones this season and now we're going to go back to running out that clock see Broadnax comes up with another big run right there creating a second in inches a little roll out and hit plant fire on the slant and that's going to put us right back in the red zone and then just wanted to get Lance Flower a touchdown right here as he's going to be wide open in the corner for some reason. Not quite sure why, but that'll work for me. Alright, one last thing to uh, show you guys is the uh, the outlook right now. As you can see, we're at 15 and we're at a C minus. We're at the top of the C minus list for our grade. And I also got into the top 100 for, uh, for all of them. As you can see, there's another sack which uh, would make them turn it over and then here this is the dagger that put the game away and uh, once again the motion screws up their defense it's going to create a mismatch and somebody forgets to go deep with Watts and that's going to be a touchdown and that's going to be your final guys 28 to 3 this one was definitely one of the easiest of the year one of the biggest games of the year but definitely one of the easiest so after playing this game it is clear that uh, the Mac is all but really gonna be easy for us so now it's time to consider thinking about uh, changing conferences and making things a little bit more difficult and also that'll vault us up into um, should vault us up into the top 10 or top 5 when uh, when we get through next season. But definitely we're going to do that. As you can see, Broadnax had a good day, 20 for 145. But Blanche Flower got player of the game for his 130 and two touchdowns. A few drops in that game, but they didn't really come back to haunt me very much. Um, you can see right here on defense real quick that my defense played a heck of a game today. Bunch of sacks all around. So we had uh, four, five, six sacks and three picks. It's a very good day for the defense. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Make sure that you guys uh, tune in next week for the final regular season game against Ball State. Peace, guys.